a little bit this morning. Uh, special K, <laughs> uh, running late. He's got a good reason, though, and I'm glad he's late because yep. we all cooked a dish last night, and we're all going to basically be presenting this to Chef Colby Cash at 8 a.m. this morning for Try It Tuesday. Now, he's got like almost 400,000 followers mm-hmm. on Instagram. It's crazy. Dang. He's on Master Chef. I believe it's tomorrow night. I'll have to look. Okay. I'll, I'll find it on Fox. Uh, I've never met him personally. Me I've, neither. I followed him and stuff. Ahmad, I know, follows him. And uh, when they reached out to me, I'm like, heck yeah, we'd love to have him on. Because he's going to bring something for us to try for Try It Tuesday at uh-huh. 8. And then we have our dishes for him to try as I'm just well. hoping he doesn't gag on what I cooked. Uh, <laughs> he's not going to. Mine is just simple. Just something that I think every family that when you're in a hurt work, you know, working 10 hours a day, mm-hmm. you can go home, you can make it. But it takes 15, 10 minutes to make. Yeah. And then 30 minutes to cook. Mm. And so less than an hour, you got a f- food for, you know, a family of five. It's Tater tot casserole. It's the, the one I made when I moved here. <laughs> the only thing I make because I got a you book. Remember your what your tier? parents make? You know, well, this one, my made. sister just gave me a book. Oh, your sister uh, did? A four ingredient cookbook, like a bachelor's guide when oh. I got divorced. <laughs> she gave me oh these things. Oh my gosh, how cute. See, growing yeah. up, like I think. Like says, it's hard, right, for you to cook. It's by really yourself. difficult. Yeah. yeah. One person. Like, I get all excited about it because I finally get a chance to cook again. I mean, for so many years, I. At heart, I'm a family man, and it's like I love gathering the family around the table and cooking. But now my daughter's moved away, and I'm alone in that house. <laughs> it's like I'm not really cooking for Mango, my dog. So it was like really fun for me to cook again like that. Plus, you don't really cook like meats and that much, right? Anymore? I, I, I mean, will for them. Chicken. I mean, yeah. by yourself though, you're. Well, I'm by myself, I'll just like it's usually a vegetarian or chicken or something, you know. But I mean, I spent hours on this thing, and it's like, I hope it's good. Might be a little spicy. I don't know. Oh, nice. Sam, do you like to cook, or do you just have, like, you do it? I mean, I don't get enjoyment out of cooking. I just know you need to eat in order <laughs> to survive. So it's like. like you know, some people live to eat, yeah. and some people, some people eat to live. It's yeah, just, or they they like to cook and to serve, make people happy. And right. I think that's what I like to do. I, I don't, I, like, I don't, I don't like, like that pressure. No, that's what I was just thinking, because it's like, oh, good. It tastes good for me, but then it's like, is it going to taste good for you? I don't know. Because mm-hmm. I feel like everyone has different taste buds. Yes. Like they do. Mark, my husband, it's easy to cook for him because we've been together for so many years, and I know what he likes and doesn't like. But, like, say if Jules or Special K comes over, it's like, I feel like they're so picky. Uh, yeah. Special K, I could yeah. see He's him being. He's so oh. picky. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to just cook dinner? And the, then I'll bring drinks. Does he ever... Uh... When you do cook, does he ever say anything or is no, he polite? No, he's been no, he's been really sweet. Uh, the stuff that I have made him, he's actually really liked. He doesn't like that because like my mother in law is like a really good cook. Yeah, like, be, that's really good to some people. But uh, maybe if you do this and add that, or you know, <laughs> <laughs> just like little tweaks. Like my brother in law is like a ex a chef. Like he cooked for like a private. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. For like oh my uh, God. For George him? Michael and them back in Europe, oh he started one of the first Tex Mex places in London mm-hmm. back in the nineties. Wow. He's done all his work at Cafe Annie and stuff. So you feel like he's going to be critiquing but, everything you serve? No, I mean, but I mean, when he does it, he gets critiqued by my mother in law. No. <laughs> oh, he's, that's funny. The yeah, way I look like, at it. Uh, I did this but for I did a beat living. him. My wife somebody beat him for best for... chili. We had a chili cook off with the whole family. Uh huh. And we all like voted, but we didn't know what to do. If somebody's rich. cooking for you, he got beat because he went too fancy. Oh, he went too fancy. With the fancy meat and the chili, like more like the syrup, whatever. It's, that wasn't like ground beef. Yeah. So the common folk thought it wasn't uh, very good. Sometimes chefs get too crazy out there and get too fancy, I think. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I just wanted a grilled cheese, bro. Yeah, just yeah. Keep it simple. I didn't need uh, <laughs> a flour growing out of it. What are they doing with all this? Like, weird... what is that? It is strange. Well, that'll be fun at 8 o'clock this morning at 7 a.m. We've got revenge going down. Mm-hmm. And uh, summer 2023 still going on. And this, uh, I mean, it's really cool that everybody's qualifying for $10,000. But we've got great prizes all the way along the way. Oh yeah, so. Posty. Post Malone tickets. Sam's yeah. Sam's uh is he not a crush, you just love his music. I just love him. Yeah. Just love I don't about. think like, do you find I him find, hot or no, just find him? if I saw him on the streets, I would not probably be like, Oh, that guy's so hot. Well you'd know him from face tattoos. tattoos. Yeah, but I'm saying like say if he wasn't known for his music oh, yeah. I saw him, I wouldn't think he was You saw probably... this dude in Walmart and he wasn't famous, you wouldn't be going, Ooh, gotta have some of that. No, That's I like, don't think so. Ryan says that about Justin Timberlake. Oh, absolutely. JT, I mean, I know everybody loves JT, but honestly, it's like if you just saw JT, he was not a famous person. He's walking around in, uh, like I said, Walmart, and he's got his horn rim glasses on. You're not going to be like, ooh, that's a hot-looking guy. But when you're on stage, I mean, that makes anyone hotter. Like Harry Styles, I always thought he was the least attractive 
of One Direction. But now look at him. His glow up is real. Yeah, his, his vibe, just yeah. everything about him is is cool. He's got a lot of talent, but I can't stand it when people say he's the new David Bowie. He's not David Bowie. Ooh, Sorry. That would not, be- not, not nobody's even David close. Bowie. Nobody's David Bowie. Some people are one of a kind, and yesterday one of a kind passed, and it crushed me. You know, there are celebrities that pass. You can talk about a and celebrity scoop. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I... I Don't it, do it! Because it <laughs> then you'll go off and it wrecked <laughs> me. And then you'll waste it all by... No, 606 no, 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 no. and you'll have nothing left. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Scoop. In two minutes. You'll be crying the there whole day. There were actually a couple of celebrity passings yesterday. Yeah, we can talk about it for celebrity scoop. Speaking was- of, whenever I think of Justin um, Timberlake, someone ruined me by saying that my older brother looks like him. So now I'm like, I can't find him attractive. Oh, yeah. If you say, oh, man, he's hot. Ew. Ew. Yeah. Then I remember that one time, that one person, it was only one person thought that my older brother looked like Justin Timberlake. Yes, show and me I'm a like, photo of your I brother. Can't, I can't do it. Well, right now, he's like going through a weird phase. He's going through a weird phase. He's going through puberty. He's, <laughs> he's, no, he's 30. How he's 33 old is he? He's, say, he's 34. Not. He's 34. He's going uh-huh. through a weird phase right now. You know, he's like. I think most men after COVID are going through weird phases. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what are you doing with, with your hair, hair and stuff? Yes. And guys just, do you remember during he COVID? He like his mustache going on and. He also has blonde hair and blue eyes, and I have. Is his hair not hair normally blonde? No, he he's just he has blonde hair. Oh, okay. It's just so weird that hmm. I have a brother that has blonde hair and blue eyes. Like the mustache is really not doing it for me. Oh, let me see. Uh, that's, that's what that's guys do. You can look at that. him. It looks it's, very. Um, it looks like nineteen seventies. Slam, slam given. I, I'll I'll post a picture of my yeah. brother. Looks and like then a '70s uh, photo that the family did at Sears. It's like uh. what? <laughs> I think this is cuter than that, but it's like the mustache. No, the I'm just not feeling the it. Filter. Maybe the filter on that. The thing. filter on it. It looks like it's. I like think a, it's just the backdrop. Like the they were at retro. a restaurant, well, and the restaurant they, is just like they take a photo here. The Sahara dust behind them. No, with the, <laughs> yeah, with that, uh, it's got the very yellow <laughs> filter on it. Is that moon still big? <laughs> yeah, the moon's red. That's what, some big moon or something. Right? I yeah. haven't. I didn't even notice it. My husband was texting me. He's like, "Did you see the moon?" But they were just showing on an abc thirteen dot I didn't. I, I didn't, didn't even see it driving it. in. I That's when you know Sam's been married a long time. Her husband used to send like sexy text each other, and then yeah, now it's a picture. He's of like, the moon. "You want to see my moon?" <laughs> and I'm like, "What? Okay." <laughs> and and now moon? it's like, "Oh, you mean that moon?" Okay, like, that sucks. Well, <laughs> welcome to someone's adult going life. texting. Poor Rula is hurting again. Now she's she's hurting, but takes a little bit of time to get from. Point A to point yeah. studio. Yeah. It's a production. C. Getting out of bed and propping the leg up. Yeah, she can't remember. She hooking up the mic. So I can get out of bed, mm-hmm. not touch, mm-hmm. put any weight on her right foot, get on that scooter and scoot over to yeah. She needs the to get studio. a TV tray, like for the bed, and just plop it right there. But like she said, Tassos is yeah. laying yeah. beside yeah. her. You're giving me your butt. So how can she? <laughs> That's the hardest part. <laughs> Noise canceling headphones. Noise canceling headphones. But doing this show from home, it's tough when you have people around you. Like, I was in my back room. Yeah, I remember during Because you're COVID. laughing and having fun. They don't loud, hear. And they just hear you. They, they think you're a crazy you. man. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like giggling by yourself. Your stupid like, laugh. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> my kids would be like, Dad, what is wrong with you? But do you remember during COVID? I'm having fun. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think do. yeah, I don't think I cut my hair for like six months at one point. And I got, I had the big, I was just having to slick it back and got so crazy. Remember, so many guys did that. You wouldn't go get your hair cut. Oh, uh, yeah. And Eric just, paid for someone to come uh, over yeah. to his house. He paid for somebody to come to your house? Totally. Yeah, well, he came to my house. He offered. Yeah. I'm like. You grew I'm, a beard in COVID. Yeah, but I can't grow beards. Some guys can grow beards. Yeah, you can't. Like Kevin can grow up. Like Kevin shaves, and then he, an hour he, later, he can like, grunt and go. Yeah. Like, yeah, I could shave, back out. and then it'd be clean shaven for, like, the, the day. You'd actually see my skin. Kevin, it looks like a G.I. Joe doll from the 80s or something. Those, those dolls <laughs> with you see people have. Shadow. Yeah, with a five yeah. o'clock yeah. shadow. And little I fuzzy. get that too, though. I mean, not as bad as Kevin. As but... you say, you get the five o'clock shadow? No, I just, light. I, just, I just shaved. Oh, no, I'm, now it is lighter, but, but it used to be like in my 20s and early 30s. Like, I had a really dark, dark beard. And yeah, I shaved my face too. And I, I last pretty long. Yeah, how's like, that go? You know, like maybe like. A month or so, I think. You should grow a mustache like your you brother. Gotta, yeah. Like we can be a stash fam. Yes. I know some women will <laughs> wax Mark their upper lip. Out. Have you ever done that? I have not. No. Some women will wax. I know. You don't want to shave. Yeah, I made out with a girl in, like, in high school. She didn't I made out all night, and then the next day I was on the, my tractor. I'm like, oh, I was just thinking about that night. And then I'm like, why is my lip hurt? You had Ew. razor burn. <laughs> the razor burn. Stop. <laughs> you had razor burn. It felt like it hurt. I remember that. I still oh to this day remember God. that. Well, now you know how us women feel. Yeah, that's what well, we talked about that in the raw feed yesterday. We did. Yeah. Because you Kevin, missed the raw feed? Ooh, wow. I'm like, I don't. 
Oh. <laughs> I don't know how you could kiss another guy nah, with, we the, were with talking the beard. About I don't, like, if I had to kiss a guy, he's got to be clean shaven. That's my rule. I'm right. sorry. If you don't want the raw feet <laughs> is, go to KRV.com. It is. Smooth face only for Eric. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. gentlemen. It, it's the show after the show, and it is not necessarily <laughs> PG. He's not thinking twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so coming up next in Celebrity Scoop, there was uh, there were. There were, there, there were two major passings like me. yesterday. You okay over there? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> I was really choked up about this. So we'll get into this a little bit. And uh, today, supposed to be the hottest day of the year. Heat advisory in effect. But on, yesterday was the hottest day of the year. Oh, now, now it's today. Every oh, day's hotter. Great. It's been the hottest week, week in the history of the world, basically. Welcome to August, people. Yeah. Yay. So heat index should be 108. Chances of rain remain zero all the way through the weekend. So it's just going to be hot. Right now, it's 610 on the Roland Ryan Show. I'm very proud to present Roland and Ryan's Celebrity Scoop on 104.1 KRBE. Hey, I want to remind you guys, the summer of 2023 is going to be happening at 820 this morning. It's 820, 120, and 520, where we give you a chance to become a finalist for $10,000. And uh, today is going to be a great day. What do we have for the summer of 2023, Sam? Post Malone yeah. tickets. Yeah. One week away. Post you day. have to take me, though. That's the only requirement. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got to drive her and take her back home. That's the biggest part of it. That's really what it is. Right? That's only one week from today. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I will say that'll happen. Somebody will be like, I'm going to win. Oh, yeah. I'm take Sam. Sam. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me know. I don't know how your husband's going to feel about that. I'm taking it work on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Call Listen, it but it's, it is a true story as a Houstonian. If you really want to go to a concert in the Woodlands, it's very um, attractive if somebody says, I got a car. We could just, like, I hired a car. Let's just, I'll drive you. I'll drop you off. You're like, yes. Yeah, that'd be nice. That's fancy living. I, I'm just Normally like, it's, it's like, Mark, Tuesday. you're driving. There's nothing better I'm than not. seeing your favorite artist there on a Friday. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Spend the That's night. So sad. Like, make a weekend out of it there yes. in the woodlands. Oh, I'm so, so sorry, Kev. I, I'm here now. I muted <laughs> you. I didn't want <laughs> you to take it. <laughs> Come here, yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> However, sorry, some Kev, bands. Kevin and I were a little behind today. <laughs> some bands just don't quite fit the woodlands like Depeche Mode. I feel like I need something dark and scary. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you there. I mean, like, well, can't they make mode? it sinistery, Kevin? With like their 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 smoke and the lights, they can't make it sinistery and dark and smoky for you. They're playing Tortoise mm-hmm. in it, right? Yeah, they are. Yes. I like that for them. Like, I yes. can see Post Malone, oh, okay. people sitting out in the, you know, having yes. a beer on the lawn yes, and yes. everything. That's what I'm saying. Beer and a really, blunt. You don't really see that with uh, Depeche well, Mode. you said it, not me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry to bring you down, but there were a couple of celebrity passings oh, yesterday. Funny. The first one is uh, Pee Wee Herman. His name is Paul Rubens in real life. Uh, he battled cancer for six years and didn't tell anybody. And the shocking, more shocking part to me was he's 70. He was 70 years old. Yeah, I knew he was that old. Um, that good. I, I, yeah, he looks great. I was 70. shocked that he had cancer for six years. Uh, a year and a half ago, I took my daughter uh, to Comic Con and we got to meet him, and he was the sweetest man roller on earth. I mean, like, all we did is, you know, we did pay for an autograph, but then he had like a break and he came out from behind the booth and he talked because I told him that Faith was uh, trying to be an actress and he literally took side like maybe five to 10 minutes just talking to her one on one. And, of course, he told her all the things I told her, but she listens to him. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Get a real job. But he was just yeah. the sweetest man. And such, I mean, for me, this was a gut punch because I grew up watching that, and it was so funny. So many people, whole, many, whole generations grew up watching Pee Wee's Playhouse. I loved the movies. They just made me laugh. I mean, we just, me and my buddies, we quoted every line in every movie. Really? You like the movies? I love the movies. Like, I mean, and, and they were... It's they, really surprising you love the movies because we have a bit of an age like, gap. Not, And I... I that was more like a wheelhouse for a younger kid. Yeah. You must have been, a little, you know, I don't know how no, old man, you were. The, the movies time, were but... a little bit less child-oriented. They had, like, adult humor in them. And they were just funny. Like, they poked fun at Texas. I remember when he's calling Dottie, and he's trying to tell her he's in Texas. Hello, Dottie. It's me, Pee-wee. Well, where are you calling from? Texas. Where? Honest. Listen, I'll prove it. The stars at night are big and bright. Big and bright. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Alamo. I mean, so oh, many yeah. people. So be, is, your bike is in the basement in the Alamo. And then when he uh, he's trying to get, he goes on this long journey and he tries to get to the uh, Alamo. And he ends up bull riding and he gets knocked out. And they come up to him and ask him these questions. Hey, kid, what's your name? I can't remember. Where are you from? I can't remember. Can't you remember anything? I remember the Alamo. Yeah! <laughs> 
<laughs> I remember I Special K that. did that. Pay tribute to him. Years yeah, you ago. dressed up like him for one of our uh, road shows. Or, no, it was a Halloween, no. Halloween party. Uh, dating, uh, uh, drink Houston. Yeah, we did something. I can't remember what we did, but I just remember you were in the bar doing the doing dance. Doing the tequila dance. <laughs> 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 on the bar, yes. Yeah. Uh, drink so drink Houston? Yeah, it was Drink Houston. Oh, my God. You were really drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, everybody. So yeah. Paul Rubin started his career um, at the Groundlings, and he did this character, Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman, yeah. And and then he ended up getting um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, directed by Tim Burton. I didn't even realize that. Oh, yeah. That was in 85. Then he got Big Top Pee Wee. Then he got Pee Wee's Playhouse. It ran from 86 to 91. And I always said that because I was such a late sleeper, even when I was a kid, the only thing I could ever catch to watch was that, because it came out at 11 o'clock on Channel 11 when I was a kid. Uh, it probably would have lasted longer than 91, but Pee Wee Herman was arrested for indecent exposure oh, in yeah. a about pornographic that. theater in Sarasota, Florida, in July of that year, and everything disappeared after that. He was gone for then a long time was, after he that. He disappeared for, for about two a years. long time. And then he came back to host our, not host, but he was one of the presenters at the MTV Video Music Awards. Mm -hmm. And he comes out and goes, anybody hear any good jokes? Yeah. <laughs> because he you know, was the butt of so many uh, jokes. And then he actually did another movie, a Pee Wee movie for Netflix. That was the um, one with uh, Joe, what's his name? Yeah, Sophia Vergara's ex-husband. Joe Mangello or whatever his name is. Can never say his name. Wait, he did Manginello. one for Netflix in yeah, what like, year? Like four years ago. About four okay. years ago. It was right before, um, right before the COVID, pandemic. I think. Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't know all the characters. I don't know all the voices. But Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens, was the voice of Locke, mm -hmm. the Nightmare Before Christmas. He the also was in Locke a... is, right off the bat. Since I don't know, I, that I don't movie remember as well. that. I didn't like that. Some movie. people are obsessed with that movie. Yeah, people love and they're that. like, oh my God, yes, I didn't know that. In 2002, he had another setback. I didn't even know about this one. I was like, oh God. <laughs> he was charged with possessing obscene material depicting an underage kid in a sexual manner, according to the papers. But Ooh. they were dropped because he explained that the stuff that he bought was vintage erotica. It was a collection that he bought, <laughs> which he considered innocent and did not realize it was. That. In vintage he, erotica. That's what it says. <laughs> he bought vintage, a vintage erotica collection that he'd purchased, which he had considered innocent, and he added he was not, quote, titillated by images of children. All of that is creep factor to the nth degree. Yeah, so, kid's show, and he's like... Just, yeah, that's ugh, why everything yeah. fell apart. He did that revival on Broadway of the Pee Wee Herman show. I don't really recall that but again then to uh you yeah, know, blow right, blow he was gonna thing. blow it was an amazing movie with johnny depp yeah. a true he story. Was in mystery man he was in batman well, returns guys man. who was he in batman he was returns? the penguin's father yeah in batman returns he's the one who man didn't he get rid of danny devito yeah they basically the penguin's father and mother like, they saw him and they said Ooh, and they like, threw him off a bridge into the river and it floated down into the into the sewers zoo or something, or something. Oh God, the zoo so sewers crazy. and then he got raised by penguins <laughs> The zoo, oh, sewers. Yeah. the zoo sewers. Well, um, Paul Rubens, 70 years old, fighting cancer for six years. In his a letter, he wrote a letter to apologize after his death. Please accept my apology for not going public with what I've been facing. For the last six years, I've always felt a huge amount of love and respect from my friends, fans, and supporters. I've loved you all so much and enjoyed making art for you. But he didn't say what kind of cancer it was. No. I don't know what kind of cancer He didn't look sick when we met him. I mean, he really wore it well. Well, look at um, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, I mean, to the end, 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 fighting colon cancer. Was it colon cancer, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, colon cancer. The other passing that was announced yesterday, Angus Cloud from Euphoria at the age of 25, had been battling mental health for a long time. He played... Um, Commandos God, more. Just... Ahmad, you watch Euphoria. Ahmad, you watch Euphoria. You jump on there. Tell me who it was. He, uh, Fez. Yeah, what did he who play? Who Angus Cloud play? Uh, he played Fezco. He, uh, he was like the town drug dealer that... Kind of got brought into the life not because he wanted to be. It was because his grandmother. And so it was like the really sweet, shy guy in the show. Okay. It's really, really heartbreaking. He was my favorite Was he a major character? character? Was your favorite character? Yeah, he was a major character. Major character. He was like developing this like really sweet romance last season. You kind of well, saw. Daughter like of a, Sand. Yeah, like a human Well, oh, I wonder how they'll write him out. I don't know. It's not even coming back to like 2026 at this point. So. Really? Oh, gosh. Yeah, well, they've they delayed not. it so many times. Mm. Well, yeah. with the magic of movies, what we've seen them bring back people like Paul Walker and uh, everybody like that, who knows how they'll tie that up. But the sad thing is his family said last week he buried his father and intensely struggled with the loss. The only comfort we have is knowing Angus is now reunited with his dad, who was his best friend. 
Angus was open about his battle with mental health, and we hope that his passing can be a reminder to others that they are not alone and they should not fight this on their own in silence. No. That's like the second, is that the second time? Um, what is it? Lisa Marie Presley's son passed away, and then she passed away. Wasn't that also kind of like a, an underlying theme in yeah, the press so stories broken. that she was yeah. so heartbroken that her son died? Look, it, it just was over for her. Do you guys remember just a few months ago, I had to fly up to Pennsylvania because my cousin took his own life. His mother had passed away one year ago, and he was heartbroken, and he shot himself in the heart. Ugh. I mean, it's just, you know, and you can reach out to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, even if you're a family member and you're worried about somebody or you've had to go through this, it's just, um, it affects everybody. It doesn't matter what your economic class is. It can be anybody. My goodness. So sad. So sad. And, you know, I really think about that when somebody else passes away and the, especially like for husbands and wives, if for whatever age, I mean, there are so many people who are left behind and they're left alone. And, you know, Eric and I have said this for years. When somebody passes away, everybody comes out of the woodwork in those first couple of days, a yeah. couple of weeks. Yep. Don't check on him the first week or the second week. Check on him the sixth or the eighth week. Yep, three when months in, whole... that's when they need you. Mm -hmm. Right, because people have all subsided. They've all said their condolences. They've all sent their flowers. Their or food. Their, you got enough ham. ham. They've moved on with their lives, <laughs> what and movie you was have it? not. What, what, it was some movie I watched last year where the family had like a freezer full of lasagnas. They were trying to eat every one of them that the neighbors. What the hell was it? Sam, you probably saw that movie. That's what I, I can't remember yes, what it was. I, the, I know, because it was like a, the a mom comedy died. feel good, yeah, wasn't it? What was it? I thought it was. A freezer full of lasagna. I just remember the, yeah. the family, they had to like, no, do we have to eat more lasagna, Ma Dad? Right. It's like, no, we're, they gave us this. We have to eat it every <laughs> night. But they had like a freezer full. Then it was getting down to the last one. I didn't think he wanted to eat it. I can't remember what that movie was. I can't uh, either. Was somebody text us at three seven five three zero. You know somebody knows, right? But somebody that's how it was with ham. I Google. I Google. Uh, I Google uh, Everyone give me movie ham. with freezer full of lasagna. You say <laughs> the first thing comes up is put Grandpa in the freezer. Nope, not that's that one. not it. <laughs> <laughs> that then was... I get all these meal choices. What? I wrote like a you letter they... to myself uh -huh. about after my mom died, like a week later, like mm -hmm. my experience, and I remember. I think that's the title was something like uh, I have to I have to pull it out. I haven't looked at it in like twenty years, but like. Enough with the ham or something like that. Like Aww. everybody Enough brought so much damn ham. I'm like, ham? Really? Why is ham the choice of meat? Or I grew up, I guess, just like those uh, those hams. What's that? What's that place you do it, commercials for, the, Sam? Oh yeah, honey baked farms. Honey baked ham. Honey baked. Yeah. Those yes. type of hams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are because expensive. They, I don't know they're big. They're expensive, but are they, are they because they last? Like you're supposed to like eat Maybe half of it keep? and freeze it for later. Is that no how that's supposed to work? I don't know if that's the death what ham, as Eric says, the death, the death ham. ham. Oh god! And you know, usually so they say celebrity deaths happen in threes. It's kind of like in fours. It was Sinead O'Connor last week, and also Tony Bennett, mm -hmm. and now we have um, uh, Paul Rubens. But I put and Sinead, Paul, and Angus because they were all you know, unexpected. Like, yeah, Tony, like Tony was right. Tony was like ninety six years old. He lived a long life. Not like so it has ooh, to be an unexpected. I mean, it doesn't have to three, be. But I just say for, least, for those three, those were like what? I mean, Tony Bennett yeah. led a long, full, rich life. Yeah, you know, we should all be so lucky to make it that. I mean, I'm not trying to downplay the pain that people suffered losing. Still going to be so, yeah. still going to be sad. Lady Gaga made a statement about that because, as you know, she worked with him. Um, by the way, Kevin, she has announced that she's going to go back Return to, to her, Vegas! The, the jazz and piano tour. See, Kev's going to go she back. Said, Let me take a she, moment to say this is the most amazing show I've ever seen in my entire life. After seeing Gaga in that manner, I can never see her again. If you get a chance, go see this show in Vegas. So she's doing it's like... the jazz and piano residency. Oh, like Tony Later Bennett type month. music? The Great American Songbook is what oh, they call yes. it. Cool. So it's not pop music. It's just like... Those she will songs. rework maybe two of her hits, but most of it is stuff that you would know Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, uh, cool. those types of crooners to do. Oh, and she, cool. And, and people were telling me the show, uh, it was Unicorn. It was a TV show on CBS. It was the guy oh. that, he's Baby Billy. Bobby, oh, uh, Walt Coggins. Oh, yeah, really? Walt Coggins. He's like, Baby Billy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was, I think. Yeah, his cause opening episode, his wife died and. And then everyone loves, he's like a unicorn because he's like the perfect guy. He is an amazing actor, too. Walt Coggins. Yeah, the unicorn, I think it only lasted like two seasons. But for some reason, that struck But that one really hit, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't remember anything of that show. I just remember the meat lasagna. <laughs> Who knew? No, stop with the lasagnas. <laughs> All right, kind of next, we're going to go it around. Was that. Yeah, was that, yep. Thank you. Did you watch it, too? Yeah, sorry. Uh, once I saw it, I had to Google it. I'm like, what Wait, is Wait, you thought we were lying? No, no, she's like, I, I, she had saw to put, too. I had to put two and two together. You were right. That's totally it. Gosh, your textures are so smart. Yep.
Just so Okay, smart. coming up next, we're going to go around the table, <laughs> and we always like to talk about food and alcohol on this show. We're going to bring up food 8 o'clock this morning with an actual chef, so that we're putting that to us. We'll give you all those details. And there's a new way to eat your ham and cheese sandwich, friends. <laughs> I've had a ham and cheese no, sandwich in forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ham. I'm going to give you a ham yum, and cheese yum, sandwich yum. twist that it probably would make Eric flip a table. Uh-oh. But let's talk about it in the round table next on the Rula and Ryan show. Off because we're going to talk about food. And I yes. want to remind everybody that 8 o'clock this morning, it's Try It Tuesday mm-hmm. with uh, Master Chef uh, Colby Cash coming into the studio to try the food of the Rula and Ryan show. And he's got like 370. 370- 5,000 followers or something wow. like that. It's Colby. It's with K's. Mm-hmm. Colby Cash. Colby Cash. Cash. Okay. With a Y. K-O-L-B-Y-K-A-S. He's going to sample the cuisines that we all stayed up last night making. Yeah, because he's going to be on, uh, on the show tomorrow night. I believe it's on Fox. And he's going Fox. to uh, bring some food himself for us to try. Mm-hmm. And just It's fun. Just go on his Instagram and see how he takes mac and cheese and makes it so. That picture so- looked Amazing, the, the or is a video? I think video, it was a video. It's a video. Yeah, he like scooped it out, and I was like, oh, even yeah, that sound is again. Yeah. Had this sound. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Kev, it's a where's the nerve wracking? Yeah, yeah. She sounded like Kev. <laughs> 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 that didn't look oh, as Lord. good as the picture, or the video. <laughs> well, speaking of food, we're talking macaroni about, and cheese no. and hot dogs. <laughs> That's right, macaroni and cheese and hot dogs not going to win you Master Chef, but um, bringing a ham to someone's house. When they are unfortunately suffering a loss is a very popular thing in the United States of America. And a ham and cheese sandwich is a very popular sandwich in the United States of America. And according to a new story about sandwiches, ham and cheese and ketchup is a good sandwich. Uh, ketchup, oh, not mustard or mayonnaise. That's, that sounds ketchup. revolting. Why not mayo? Now, how did this, co- now, how did this come up? Mustard? Because yeah, mustard or mayo. a sandwich yeah. survey. Yeah, you'd think mustard. I would mustard would be mustard. good. I could do Swiss cheese, ham, and mustard. I can't. I I'd can't throw do Swiss. It smells like feet. Have you ever done this? Cheese. Like, Swiss cheese. Like sometimes Swiss smells like feet to me. I can't. I can't. If you have cold meat, can't. It tastes so good. Take a little. Take a little Italian dressing. Just dash that on it. Two slices of bread. It's good. It's not. But if you if you got the right bread, man, or that turns into a mess. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Eat it fast. Like, you don't sit there and marvel at it. Nah, you can't do too much of that. You gotta have like a good like ciabatta roll or something for that. You, Never, you can do just American s- sliced white bread. <laughs> Whenever you guys bring up lunch meat or deli meat, I always think of my first uh, oh, yeah, lunch date with Special K. Why? Um, How cute! Did little you guys little make... Kevin came up to me. Yeah, his lunch. Hello, bag. sir. Could I'd like to learn how to be a producer. Could we go to <laughs> lunch someday? I'd like to take you. So uh-huh. we went, where'd we go? <laughs> Brown bag deli. Brown bag deli, the one that used to be over there by. Well, West Alabama. West, but no, it was Westheimer <laughs> and Shepherd. And what kind of food? Just sandwiches. It was sandwiches. 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 Then I realized he just keeps he doesn't no have money. any money. <laughs> he doesn't nope. got no money. Sam, do you remember like twelve dollars an hour is what I was making? And that as, sandwich was probably ten bucks. So. A, a producer of the Mexicans in the morning was the name of the show. Uh huh. On one hundred and one. Yeah. And and Mega one hundred and one. And thank God, producer Eric sat down with me and got me pointed in the right direction. I felt so bad for him. He was lost. Like Aww. I was so lost. It was his fault. Little this. boy lost. Because he was they, always getting yelled at. Yeah, I got yelled at so you much. You had a verbally abusive boss. And and I didn't realize what a producer of an FM morning show was supposed to do. I came from pushing buttons and running the Astros radio network. They called me a producer there, but I was just producing the sound. You're just yeah. mountain not, boy. Not producing the show. Yeah. Oh, there's more to this. Yeah. Well, was the sandwich good, though, Eric? Oh, was it, what, oh, you remember yeah, the I sandwich? Love, I love that place. I always have, every time I go there, I think that nice memory of the first time I hung out with Kevin. That's Kevin's. cute. Aww. And I looked at no. you like some rich-ass producer, which you still are right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> but when you go to school, Cool. Did any of y'all have to take like a brown bag lunch? Because Sam, you know summer bologna, right? Lebanon bologna. Yes. So my mom um, would make that sandwich, and I had ugh. to put it in my locker. And the principal came Ew. and said something's rotting in one of the lockers. And they went through all the lockers, and it was my sandwich in the bag. How yeah. do we not get sick as kids? Stunk so bad. You have this, love this stuff that probably needs to be refrigerated. refrigerated. And it it's yeah. in our hot locker for six hours. And a yeah. cubby. It sat in my cubby. Well, I know that you probably had some smelly food at lunch. 
Well, I was the lunch queen, and it was not smelly. It was just, oh, my God, can I have some? <laughs> because being the child of a family who has a restaurant, my mom would bring us a hot lunch. Not every day, but a lot of times. She didn't have time in the morning to get five kids' sandwiches ready to go. That was usually my Wait, job. Wait, she just walk right into the cafeteria and then boom. We didn't have eating. a cafeteria. Oh. St. Thomas Episcopal did not have a cafeteria. I don't think they still do. I don't know. Rolly, if that me. I have your yeah. lunch. And here's how it worked, Deb. Here's how it worked. So my the oldest brother to my youngest it. brother, my oldest brother, my youngest brother, we had a 10-year gap. So my oldest brother was in high school and my youngest brother was in first grade. Mm. So my mom would have to bring him. No, I'm sorry. He was in kinder. And so my mom would bring him at 12 o'clock for kinder. And when when she brought him at 12, she'd bring five boxes of Christy Seafood choices. It usually was a cheeseburger or a fried shrimp and french fries box or something. She'd put them in locker 89 <laughs> so you could smell that yummy food wafting through the high school hall. Poor other kids. And, oh my and God. we all knew that if we go to locker 89, our lunch, like our, our, our box was there. Mm. And so... Everybody was like lining up at my desk for a French fry. It was amazing. You can't, can't do that now. You, no, can't, you can't, can't have like a last. parent just like pop it in the middle of the day. Yeah, you can. What? Can I, you? I yeah, have yeah. lunch with my kids all the time at school. Mm. Yep. I will yeah, never totally forget. Loud. I will never forget the t the one time my mom drove into the city of Wilmington, Delaware, from the suburbs where we lived because I forgot my lunch, and it was the middle of her work day. You did and it today too. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and m my mom was a boss. I mean, she had the high heels, the shoulder pads, the women's power suit. She walked into that cafeteria, and I swear everyone stopped and turned around <laughs> and looked awesome. at this this powerful woman coming in awesome. with a little brown bag and said in front of me here you go honey it's like working girl yeah. that, uh, was that? Yes. Yes. and, and that i took out again. my retainer and said thanks mom for bringing him my lunch oh. everyone's like who is that lady i was like that's my mom she's an architect <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Good memories well ham and cheese is the first number one sandwich ketchup the first condiment making ham and cheese and ketchup Ooh. the lunch you should try today no hey, yo. sandwiches hey, with hey, sam hey, yeah. 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 finally sam yeah. Been waiting right. for this. Yes. Bring that bags for your sandwiches with Sam. <laughs> sandwiches like with five Sam. hours sandwiches later. Sandwiches with Sam. Okay, this is brought to you by Duncan. Speaking of back to school, Caribbean East teaming up with Crime Stoppers of Houston today to give out free backpacks uh, to Houston area families. Now it's going to start at ten thirty at Crime Stoppers headquarters. That's three thousand one Main in Midtown, and it's while supplies last. A child and must your child be must present. be with you. Yes, yeah. a child must be present to get this. There. So you can't just be some adult yeah. saying, "I like these free clear backpacks." Yeah, Ma, you got to have go the kid there. with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, and these are nice I backpacks. Like school. <laughs> yeah, and they're fully backpacks, equipped too. They've, they've got all you. the supplies in them. I mean, it's a great. There's deal. no logo on the backpack, so yeah. No. Like, so any cool kid backpack. would love this. By the way, there is a heat advisory in effect for all of this area until 9 p.m. Heat index should hit 108 degrees today. And I can't believe today is the 50th anniversary of Marvin Zindler's best little whorehouse in Texas. Fifty years well, you ago today. You got to explain it a little bit more in detail. I'm you going didn't to call it that. That's what the well, movie was called. Well, Marvin Zindler <laughs> busting it. That made a movie about it. Marvin Zindler got it shut down. It was in Lagrange. He aired a series of investigative reports. Prostitution was not legal in Texas in the 1970s. As the investigation continued, Marvin discovered that there were financial kickbacks that allowed the rent to remain, remain open as long as it did. It had been running illegally for 129 years. Wow, I'm going to get death threats. Oh, I'm Marvin sure Zimmer he did. was a very popular television personality and reporter for ABC 13 KTRK, and his big moniker was Marvin Zandler, Eyewitness Witness News. News. And he would wear blue glasses, and he had a white toupee, like mm -hmm. a total white wig. I said, and that was the big thing. There's a shirt this lady makes uh, Marvin Zandler. Yeah, shirts. I think I might have to get one of those. So I have one of those. Didn't I get? Did I give you one, Kev? Not the one that no, Kevin or that one. Eric sent. With the with the Astros thing, it was Marvin Zindler with yeah that one. What? Wait, hold on, let me see. No, no, not yeah. slime, not slime. There was one no, for the I Astros. No, it's really I, cute. I thought I brought Eric, it to you. Post it. No, no. It's Marvin Zindler in a white suit and it says slime. By the way, so what Marvin did back then, fifty years ago today, he made a call to the governor, governor, who called the sheriff, and they shut it down after one hundred and twenty nine years. And then of course and they made a play and a musical. A Dolly movie. Parton star starred in the movie. Dolly Parton really started as like the madam. Play out of it. I've never seen it, but yeah. I always know it's a Dolly movie. It's not connected a good movie. To Houston. I don't think Marvin cared for the movie either. No? No. They had Dom DeLuise playing his character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he liked looks, it. Looks, looks nothing like him. No. Neither did the sheriff or the madam. They looked like really, really old people. They had Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton playing them. 
a weird. But they weren't all the time. What do you mean? Dolly Parton no, was the real the life time. people that they were playing did not look like them. Oh. I mean, Burt Reynolds looked really like, good. Dolly Parton looked real really life. good. And the real life people, their counterparts, looked like old. It's like nudity at a beach. Yeah, it's never good. never good <laughs> unless you go to like Europe or something, maybe. Well, coming up next. Okay, Eric. <laughs> he, well, he's been there and he's yeah, taking pictures. Um, and he's taking pictures. <laughs> and he's taking pictures. pictures. <laughs> coming up next, it's Tuesday, so it's time for revenge. Somebody got back at somebody else. We're going to hear all about it next on the Rule and Rain Show. 